Hey everyone, it's Ladine from Sugar Stitches Quilt Co. I make quilting videos and tutorials to help you become a better quilter. And today that involves sharing my top favorite quilting tools and notions that I use regularly in my sewing room. As most quilters know, the proper tools and your favorite tools are the ones that will ensure your success. And I want to share mine with you today. Do me a favor and drop me a comment below and let me know what your favorite tools and notions are. I love hearing your suggestions and I'm always on the lookout for a new tool or notion. Having the proper tools and notions in your sewing room can not only impact your productivity, but it can also increase your time management and precision. So I've got my favorite ones together, so let's get started talking about them. First on my list is a cone of Aurifil thread. This is 50 weight Aurifil thread in white, and I love piecing with Aurifil thread. I found that it is the perfect width. It's not too thick, but it's strong. And all of my piecing I usually do in white, so there's no reason to change colors. There's a very low amount of shedding with Aurifil as well. And I buy it in this nice big cone so that I can always have it on hand. So having this just saves time and it's a great product. My next favorite tool is my Aliso Mini Project Iron. And I love this little iron so much. I use this next to my sewing machine where I am piecing my blocks. One of the reasons that I love it so much is First, it gets super hot. The second thing is it has a nice point on the edge that is just perfect for getting inside those seams when you're pressing seams. And it's a perfect size that you can just lay straight down on your blocks when you're pressing. As I mentioned, I like to keep mine next to my sewing machine so I can just move over after sewing my seam and then press it and just continue on. Going along with the mini iron, I love my Aliso wool pressing mats as well. These are a new product from Aliso. I've always loved wool pressing mats, but these connect together to make larger areas for pressing. The little silicone tabs just connect together and then you can make a larger surface. Wool pressing mats is one of the keys to flatter blocks coupled along with a tailor's clapper. If you watched my video on getting perfect seam allowances and the perfect scant quarter inch seam allowance, then you'll know that one of my absolute favorite tools is my magnetic seam guide. If you didn't catch those videos, then I've linked them over here for you so that you can take a look at that and see how I use this little tool. But I've noticed a tremendous increase in the precision of my seam allowances since I've been using this magnetic seam guide. And it essentially just attaches to your sewing machine bed as long as you have a metal sewing machine plate. If you don't, they do have other options or if you have a drop-in bobbin, there's other options for you as well. So this only works with this type of sewing machine bed, but again, it is a magnet and it just attaches to the plate. I like to measure where my seam allowance is and then just place the magnet in that area and then just sew, so it's perfect. My next favorite tool is one that you probably wouldn't expect to find in a sewing room, Elmer's School Glue. I actually have it in not only a tube, but I have a little mini pen and then I have a glue stick too. So this newest little mini pen is great because it has a tip on it already, a little precision tip. And I love to use this when making my binding. I glue based my binding. And I also will sometimes use this if I don't want to use pens when I'm piecing. I'll actually use just a little dab of glue and a seam allowance heat set that with your iron for just a moment. It holds everything together without any residue. It doesn't gum up my needle, mostly because I don't use too much. So I would caution you if you are going to use it, don't use too much, you just need a little bit. And then they're washable so that you don't really have to worry about the glue being in your final product because you're gonna be washing your quilt and then the glue will wash out naturally. 
I like to use the Elmer's school glue stick when I am paper piecing. Uh, this is in purple. They make them now, which disappears. It's just nice to be able to see, but it's a really good economical way to help yourself in your sewing room. My next favorite tool are pens, but not just any pens. I have two specific pens that I really like, and I find that they help a lot with my piecing. The first one is made by Taylor Seville, and these are Magic Grip pens and you can see you can just hold it there you can see that it's just much easier to hold on to the end when you're putting it into your fabric and I like the extra fine these are technically called applique pens but they're extra fine and I find that when I put them into say for example a seam allowance after matching my seams, my fabric doesn't shift as much when I use these thinner pens. I've noticed that when I use a thicker pen, that my fabric will actually shift when I'm pinning. And I don't want that because the whole idea of pinning is to avoid the fabric from shifting. My second favorite pen are Clover brand, and these are glass head, and they are also extra fine quilting pens. Again, they're about the same width as the Magic Grip, and they are just as efficient in how I mentioned not being thick enough to move my, move and shift my fabric when I'm pinning squares together. So those are my two favorite pens. That technically only counts as one notion though, right? My next favorite tool is a specialty tool. If you do applique of any type, or if you just need an extra pair of smaller, very precise scissors, these are made by Karen K. Buckley, and they are the six inch applique scissors. And I love these because the handles are so comfortable. And then as I mentioned, the tip is so nice and pointed and sharp that they're just the perfect size. Sometimes when you're in your sewing room, you don't need your large fabric scissors and small snips are sometimes too small or too uncomfortable to hold. So I really love these. I have been doing more applique and so I use these in that process, but I also find myself using them for other tasks as well. So they've become really an all-purpose type scissor for me in my sewing room. My next favorite tool is new to me in my sewing room and that is the OmniGrid ruler. This is a one inch by six inch ruler and this is my new best friend. I find myself using this a lot. It's so nice and small that I keep it next to my sewing machine and I use it if I want to check my seam allowance, make sure that I'm sewing an accurate seam. I also use it when I am attaching my binding and you know the little end when you come and you want to make sure that you're a quarter of an inch away. I'll just pull this out and just make sure that my measurements are accurate. It's just an all around great tool to have. It's like I said, it's small and unlike a lot of rulers, it doesn't take up a lot of room and it's really something handy that you can pull out when you want a quick measurement. My next favorite tool is my rotating cutting mat by Martelli Notions. This is their 12 inch rotating cutting mat. I love this because not only does it have the grid on the mat, but then it also has the 45 degree and 60 degree lines on it. Most importantly to me, it rotates so easy. The little bearings in this are so smooth. And then when you are moving the mat around there's no stopping or skipping or anything like that and so i just find that it's a really great tool when you're cutting your blocks and you're trying to rotate your mat so that you can trim on all four sides it's just so nice to have something that rotates smoothly and operates nicely and then also from martelli notions is my martelli ergonomic rotary cutter now this rotary cutter i had seen before i actually used it and everyone joked that it looked like a pizza cutter and it is definitely shaped differently than a typical rotary cutter but it's ergonomic in design and meant specifically to relieve some of the pressure that you have to put on the cutter when you're cutting your fabric I actually had, I broke my ring finger. And so typically you would hold the rotary cutter in this manner with your finger here to brace it and cut. 
What's great about this cutter is that I can actually grip it here and sometimes put my thumb in this area and I still have great control on it. I found that the loss of strength that I have in this finger is really not an issue for me anymore. I used to have trouble gripping in this manner to use a traditional rotary cutter, but I don't have that problem with the Martelli ergonomic rotary cutter. I can hold it easily, safely, without any issues. And you can see the blade, it, they're nice and sharp from Martelli. And then the safety guide is right here. And it's nice because you can literally just rotate that back and forth to open and close it. I can do that with my finger as I'm cutting. So I like that as well because having an easier safety mechanism ensures that you really use it when you're done cutting your fabric. So it's easy to just flip that down. And then when I place my cutter down, I don't have to worry about it being an exposed blade. Well, there you have it, my favorite tools in my sewing room. I hope you enjoyed this video and found some new tools that maybe you would like to try. Again, don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know about your favorite tools. And if you like this video, then make sure and hit like and subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching today and happy sewing.